story time about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with my stepsister. So a little background information, my mom remarried whenever I was in eighth grade and my stepdad had two daughters, one which was my age and we got along really well. Well, before my sisters and I went back to school, my mom wanted to go on a camping trip with everyone and my boyfriend was coming because he was really close with my family. So while my stepsister and I are packing up, she starts acting really weird and we're gonna call my boyfriend Kevin. She was like, oh, is Kevin still coming with us? And I was like, yeah. And then she goes, oh, are you and Kevin still together? And I'm like, we were never broken up, like the fuck? Like I said, she was just being super fucking weird. But anyways, we all get in the car, we drive up there and her and Kevin start being super weird around each other. Like they were being too touchy. Anytime that I wanted to go do something with Kevin, she would say, oh, Kevin, you can come do this instead. Well, that night, Kevin and I are sleeping in our tent. At least I thought he was. And I wake up to some loud noises in the other tent, like for part two. Part two. So like I said, I heard a bunch of noises and talking in my stepsister's tent and I wake up and my boyfriend isn't in the tent. So I be very quiet getting out of my tent and I go over to hers and I just listen. And oh bitch, I should have just confronted them because I got my motherfucking feelings hurt. He was telling her how he didn't love me at all and how he only wanted to be with her and how every time that they kissed each other and screwed each other, he felt such a connection between them. So not only was he cheating physically, but they had a connection. Wonderful. So I open her tent and I confront them. This was the most degrading thing I've ever went through in my life. And I said, I heard you guys outside. And I'm just not the type of girl who's going to come at another girl because my man wants her. Because at that point, he's not my man. She goes, sit down, sweetie. We need to talk. Apparently, they're in love. So they started dating. They're still dating. And my parents allowed it. So I distanced myself from all of them. My fiance and I are getting married this September. The issue lies with the dress code. We have been clear from the beginning that this is going to be a white tie event. So of course there are strict rules attached to that. One thing we are really looking forward to is our wedding shoot. We have spent a large amount of our own money on a photographer. The photographer is highly, highly sought after in our area and we were lucky to book him last year in advance. So naturally we are taking this seriously. The invitations we sent explicitly told our guests what we would be expecting from them. White tie, no unnaturally dyed hair, no visible tattoos or piercings, and that they were free to decline the invitation if they had a problem with this. We also sent everybody who RSVP'd a reminder over email several weeks ago repeating this instruction. This is going to be fine until one of our mothers has recently posted on Facebook a picture of a cocktail style dress she wants to wear on the day. Of course, this isn't included in our dress code, so we informed her right away that the dress would be unacceptable. Unfortunately, this has caused a lot of unnecessary drama throughout both of our families and even some friends. Both set of parents, cousins, some siblings, and many more people have messaged us privately to ask us to relax on our dress code and allow them to be flexible. We are hosting a private event where we will be able to set the rules. Having been to other weddings over the years, we have fully complied with the wishes of the marrying couple and we do not see why we should not be given the same treatment. Since we made this clear, we've been called assholes by people around us. However, in our opinion, this is our wedding and we've been clear about our preferences all along. We have even told our guests that if anyone has a problem with this, they are free to drop out even though we will still be paying for their seats now and not attend. Am I the asshole for having a dress code at our wedding? They put an edit saying, just so you know, everyone shouting Bridezilla is being very sexist. I am the man in this relationship, and while my fiancé and I agree on this issue entirely, I am the one who posted this submission. Story time, my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for two years, but we were on and off all the time. It was a super toxic relationship. Like, he would try to get with other girls, and I would try to get with other guys to make him jealous, blah, blah, blah. Well, a week before Christmas, him and I broke up again. And I had my best friend sleep over that whole week because her parents were in Ireland. And my boyfriend lived right down the street from me. Like, it was probably a two-minute walk to his house. Well, for the first three nights, my best friend would go on a jog every night and she would be gone for like two hours. I would literally have to go unlock the door at one in the morning for her to get back in my house. Well, I think the third night that she slept over, she came back in different clothes. And I realized that the sweatshirt she was wearing was my boyfriend's favorite sweatshirt. But I didn't really think anything of it because she never really showed interest in my boyfriend. But clearly I was oblivious. Anyways... So that same night, I wake up in the middle of the night and she's on the phone with someone. And it sounded exactly like my boyfriend. So I asked her who it was, but she couldn't give me an answer, like for part two. Part two of how my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. So she told me not to worry about it and I was like, all right, whatever. So the next day, my boyfriend shows up at my house asking to get back together. Not a surprise, by the way. And of course I said, okay, we can be back together, blah, blah, blah. So that night while I'm in my room, my best friend's on the phone and she has her AirPods in so I couldn't hear who it was. And she was like, okay, I'll be there in five minutes. And when I asked her where she was going, she wouldn't tell me. Well, she left her phone at my house. And because she usually tells me everything, I thought that something sus was going on. So I went through her phone. And I see that she's been texting this guy Jay a lot. 
And as I'm going through their conversation, there's one text that says, I don't care if she finds out. Just sneak over to my house while you're there. So I check the phone numbers and obviously it's my boyfriend. And her parents are really strict. Like she was only supposed to be at my house that week, nowhere else. So I may have made up some stories that she had drugs in her bag and that she was forcing me to do drugs with her. So her parents came home early from their trip. They sent her to military school and I broke up with my boyfriend. I got married four years ago and my husband and his family are many times over millionaires. My family is just middle class. Our wedding cost around 700k paid by him and his parents. My parents gave me a flat fee of 10k for a dress which they are also giving to my sister too. My sister and her fiance are lower class. She has 170k in student loan while he has 110. They have 18k in medical debt and 35k in credit card debt. Well last night was my sister's birthday dinner and she announced she was engaged and wanted help paying for her wedding. She gave me a spreadsheet of how much she was going to need for her dream wedding. Anyways her dream wedding is supposed to cost 100 k and as her only sister i need to step up and help pay for her wedding since her parents are only giving her 10k for a dress she said she needs me to give her at least 70k since i'm rich now when i told her i'm not giving her 70k she cried and said it wasn't fair how i get whatever i want when she realized i wasn't going to budge she broke down about how i'm just using motherhood to be greedy and lazy i have two-year-old twins I eventually told her I wasn't going to be bullied into giving her 70k. She's 15 weeks pregnant, hence why she's in a rush to be married right away. When I tried to leave, she just snapped and said I'm a bad mother since my mother-in-law stays over often to help. Anyway, she screamed about how I lied about my postpartum depression for the first few months after giving birth and it wasn't real and I only used it to cover up how much of a terrible mother I am an even worse wife since I wasn't well enough for intercourse for a few months. I told my mom and my mom told her. I feel bad for her since I know she's struggling but I hate her for saying that kind of stuff in front of strangers. My brother who's usually neutral says I should forgive her since she's stressed from crippling debt and has two kids and a third on the way. She's claimed I'm jealous of her since she's younger. She's 25 and I'm 33 and now since I'm over 30 my husband is probably cheating on me with the housekeeper and nanny for all I know since I'm never home. I have helpers twice a week mostly just to go to the salon with my friends in a weekly date story time about how i did the you know what with my celebrity crushes disclaimer this is not my story time it was sent to me on instagram i'm from a really small town in the midwest growing up i knew i wanted to go to la and be famous as soon as i turned 20 i decided to move to la showed up to la with 400 dollars and a dream my dream was to meet all of my celebrity crushes i happened to be tall and pretty good looking so i got myself a modeling agency a few weeks after i got to la i booked my first job i got to model for a runway show from there i met a stylist who introduced me to a bunch of people and from that i was able to start going to a bunch of industry parties. I met tons of celebrities, influencers, and basically socialites. I even met Kim Kardashian at a party four years ago. When I would go to these parties, I would tell people that I was a model. But in order to prove that, I had to have a pretty big following on Instagram. So I took all of my savings that I had, and I bought myself 100,000 followers on Instagram. With those 100,000 followers, I was able to get verified. And after that, I started DMing as many celebrities as I could, especially my celebrity crushes. And no, I won't say who they are. After a few weeks, I still didn't have the responses that I wanted, aka AKA from my celebrity crushes, but I started getting some responses from other celebrities. Not as famous or good looking, but still people that could definitely help me get to them. Basically, my life consisted of going to castings, go sees, and going to photo shoots. I also started doing music videos, and this is when it really got interesting. I started meeting tons of rappers and started getting invited to bigger and bigger parties. Like, really exclusive parties. The kind where you couldn't take your phone in, and the kind where you had to sign an NDA to make sure that you couldn't say anything about what you saw at the party. My Instagram was also growing really quickly. I went from 100,000 followers to 150,000 within a few months. I even became really good friends with some celebrities that worked on TV shows, like the kind of TV shows that you guys see on Netflix. I felt like I was getting closer and closer to my dream, but still, I never met my celebrity crushes at any of those parties. One morning, I wake up to a few DMs on my Instagram, and it was one of my celebrity crushes. I basically sent him a message just saying, hey, I'm in town, I'd love to take you out for a drink. And he replied with a yes. Nothing else, just a yes. I quickly replied and asked him if he wanted to go for a drink that night. He agreed to meeting up at a bar on Sunset Boulevard. I want you guys to understand something though. I was looking for a boyfriend, not just a one night, you know. So I wore my cutest outfit, nothing sexy. I basically looked like a Chanel model from the 1950s. As soon as he saw me, he told me that I was beautiful and we got to talking. Everything was going really, really great. After that, you know what happened. But here's the thing. I messaged him on Instagram the next day and he didn't reply. He didn't even ask me for my phone number. I got really sad, but the next day I opened up my DMs to another celebrity crush. Part two is up. Part two of how I did it with my celebrity crushes. So after I had my date with my biggest celebrity crush ever, he never called me back. But the very next day, I wake up to a DM from another celebrity crush. Now, I didn't think this one would respond because he was in a relationship at the time. No, I'm not going to say who it is. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. He was super nice over DM and asked me if I wanted to go have lunch. I said, yes, of course. We decided to have lunch on the weekend. Throughout the week, he would message me and ask me how I was. But two days before the meeting, he totally ghosted me. I didn't hear back from him at all. So the day before the date, I texted him. 
him. He finally replied and told me that he had been working. We decided to have dinner and he started asking me tons of questions, like if I had a boyfriend, and I told him I was totally single. When I asked him if he had a girlfriend, he stayed quiet. He said he didn't want to answer that question. Of course I knew he had a girlfriend because it was all over the tabloids. Like there were tons of paparazzi pictures of them together. But here's the thing. We had a fancy dinner. Then he asked me if I want to go back to his place. Of course I said yes. And when I get there, I see pictures of him with his girlfriend, the one he didn't want to talk about before. I then go to the bathroom, open the cabinets, and it's full of girl stuff. I quickly realized that he took me to his girlfriend's place to, you know what? I mean, maybe they had an open relationship, but at the same time, like, why would he take me to his girlfriend's place? But I kept my goal in mind. We finally, you know what? And then afterward, he asked me if I wanted to sleep over. That's when I told him no, because I knew that we were in his girlfriend's place. He starts laughing and tells me that she's out of town and that she'll never find out that he took me there. I asked him how many girls he's taken there before. And once again, he said he didn't want to answer the question. He then hit me up every single day for like a month. I didn't know if I should see him again because of the whole girlfriend thing. But then I got another DM. Part three is up. Part three about how I did it with my celebrity crushes. Clear, this is not my story time. I was setting me on Instagram. So finally, my third celebrity crush DMs me back. No, I'm not going to say who it was, but he's pretty famous. He actually invited me over to his place for dinner. He ordered some takeout and we watched a movie. We finally got down to it. Hey, you know what? And it was really bad. And the worst part is afterward, he asked me if it was good. Of course, I lied and said, yes, it was great. The look of relief on his face was apparent. How could it be so insecure being so famous and so attractive? I didn't get it. I actually did go out with him two more times, but I kind of got bored of him. Remember the second celebrity I told you about in part two? He started getting really crazy. He would call me and text me all the time, and when I wouldn't answer, he would send me messages asking where I was. He became super jealous and controlling. I decided to block him, but I'm now considering if I should maybe unblock him because the other celebrities I DM'd haven't DM'd me back. But I have a whole new list of celebrities I'm going to be DMing. Should I text number two back? What do you guys think? I'm 24 years old and I recently married my childhood sweetheart. We had a pretty small wedding due to the global situation, but it was planned well in advance so we didn't cancel, just kept it to family. And we planned to have a party with everyone else at a later date. For some background on my husband, his parents had him pretty young. They were both 18 and 19 and he has a very close family. Our wedding reception was quite intimate, but we had the traditional speeches planned. Father of the bride, best man, which was my husband's brother, and the groom. It was only the day before that my mother-in-law asked if she could have the mic to say a few words when we sat down to eat. And we said this would be great. Big mistake. Stupid us. We figured she would talk about us at our wedding, so we never asked what she planned to say. She announced to all of our guests that she's expecting a baby. She's still pretty young and very healthy, but it was a huge shock that just completely took over the night. What's even worse for me is that I'm also pregnant and we plan to announce it at the wedding, but I told my husband to just leave it out of his speech. Everything felt a bit sour for me after that. After the wedding, I didn't speak to my mother-in-law for a few days and I got a call from her sister to ask what's up. I explained that I felt like the attention was taken away from us without our permission. I would have said no if I knew she was going to announce her pregnancy. And it was unfair to spring that on us. Apparently, I ruined my own wedding because it was obvious to all the guests I was upset about the good news and I was being totally selfish. Maybe I was, but it was my wedding day that was already ruined by a pandemic. My husband is on my side though. He clearly feels a bit uncomfortable telling his mom that, which I get. I don't want to have this argument directly with the pregnant woman either. The rest of the family is split down the middle, my side and his, because it was such a close family event anyway, we'd all need some happiness. Now I'm starting to wonder if I overreacted and spoiled everything. The petty side of me wants me to announce my pregnancy at her baby shower. I know it would be wrong, but I want her to get a taste of her own medicine of what she did to me on my wedding day. So am I the asshole for trying to ruin her special day because she ruined mine? Story time on how my dad tried to abuse me, but my mom saved my life. Okay, y'all, so boom, we gonna get right into it. I was 11 years old at the time, but I only lived with my mom. My parents were married, but my dad had an engineering job at another state, so I rarely seen him. Until around this time when everything started happening, my dad lost his job, and he ended up moving back in with me and my mom. So me and my dad's relationship was never the best because it was kind of short-lived and over the phone, but I thought that him moving in would change that. Now, my mom was working two jobs, but she was doing so great at her first job that she was going to quit at her second job because they were giving her a promotion. Keep this in mind because it's important for the future. So about two weeks into my dad moving back in with us, I would always be alone with him when my mom went to work. And each day in these two weeks, it started escalating more and more between me and my dad. Things went from him rubbing my shoulders to my arms to my thighs and to my cat. I didn't know what to do. And each night I went to sleep crying, running out of time, like for part two. Part two on how my dad tried to abuse me, but my mom saved my life. Okay, so boom, like I said, my dad went from touching me on my shoulders to my arms to my thighs to my cat. 
I cried myself to sleep every night because I was terrified and I didn't know what to do. I didn't tell my mom because I was literally just scared. But my mom is a superhero. She noticed that there was something wrong with me. She asked me if I was okay and she kept checking on me every single night. I even heard her ask my dad what was going on, but of course my dad denied knowing anything. But my mom noticed that things changed only when my dad moved back in. So the next day, remember that job I told you my mom had? Yeah, she got promoted and she quit her second job. She literally came home six hours early. So of course my dad didn't expect her anytime soon. Well, she seen my dad trying to do the nasty with me and she literally slapped the living soul out of him. Me and my mom went to my aunt's house and she divorced him and he's now in prison. Till this day, I thank my mom because he never got a chance to fully violate me. Story time about how my boyfriend mom went from hating me to having a threesome with me and her son. Okay, so boom, we are jumping right in. One day I was with my boyfriend and we were on our way to the movies and he got a call from his mom. She told him that he needed to come home immediately because of something important at home. But I knew that every time she did this was because she really just wanted her son to stop hanging out with me because she hated my guts. Like she did not like me and I never knew why. Oh, but one day I figured it out. So one evening on the one month anniversary of me and my boyfriend, I was getting ready doing what girls do and I kind of expected you know what to happen so I shaved my hoo-ha. I got all pretty and I headed over to my boyfriend's house. I knock on the door and his mom answers. His mom then tells me that I'm an hour early and he's still getting his haircut so he's not home. I told her sorry I must have gotten the times wrong so I asked her if I can wait right here. She gave me a disgusted look and said whatever and slammed the door. Then she said she's been waiting for this moment like for part two. Part two on how my boyfriend mom went from hating me to having a threesome with me and her son. Okay, so boom, like I said, she closed the door and told me she's been waiting for this moment. She then says that I'm a fine young lady and she's been waiting to have me alone and that we have one hour before her son gets there. At that moment, it hit me. I knew exactly what was going on. And quite frankly, I was happy because his mom is hot. She led me to her room and then we started doing the nasty. By the way, she's 29 and I'm 17. Y'all wouldn't believe what happened next my boyfriend walked through the door caught us but he wasn't shocked he wasn't even mad it was more like a jealous thing then he joined and we all started doing the nasty i was literally shocked i didn't believe what was happening and this went on for two years but then me and my boyfriend wanted to stop and just focus on each other and not his mom she didn't like that at all like for part three Part three on how my boyfriend mom went from hating me to having a threesome with me and her son. Okay, so boom, like I said, after two years of me and my boyfriend dealing with his mom, we wanted to stop and just focus on each other. And oh, she didn't like that at all. She went right back to treating me horribly and hating my guts. And whenever she had a chance, she kept trying to break me and my boyfriend up. But it never worked. It looks like the only way to make her stop is to dabble back with her, but I'm not interested. Eventually, I'll move out with my boyfriend and we'll be all situated. So if you find out your boyfriend mom hates you, maybe she just wants to be with you. Story time about how I found out my dad wanted to do the nasty with me. Okay, so boom. I was nine at the time and my dad was 30 and my mom was 29. Me and my dad were close, but we weren't that close. You get what I'm saying? Me and my mom, on the other hand, we were besties. That's my best friend. She a real, uh, uh, on a dance floor. Uh, 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 uh. Anyways, one day while my mom was at work, my dad asked me to come sit on his lap. Now, let me remind you that I'm nine years old and I don't know what's going on in my dad's mind. So I just sit on his lap. Then while I was sitting, he started moving me around his lap while moaning. At first, I thought he was laughing, so I thought it was a joke, so I never told my mom. But then, it started happening every day. He only did this when my mom wasn't home. I became extremely uncomfortable, so I finally told my mom. My mom asked me how did it look and sound, and I showed her. She immediately ran to my dad and slapped him. Life for part two. Part two on how I found out my dad wanted to do the nasty with me. Okay, so boom, like I said, my mom ran to my dad and slapped him. Then my mom told me to stay in my room while they, uh, talked. She told me to get ready for bed, so that's what I did, and I went to school the next day. And guess who picked me up? Yeah, my dad. But I thought it was all good because he took me to the park and nothing happened. But I was wrong, because once we got home, my dad thought my mom was working, so he tried to do the nasty with me, and he tried to make me do stuff with him. But the gag was, my mom was in the room sleeping. She usually got off at 6, but today she got off at 2, and I got out of school around 4. Anyways, while my dad was trying to make me do things with him, I started screaming. My mom was sleeping, so once she heard me screaming, she ran to my motherfucking rescue. When I tell you my mom dealt with him, she dealt with him. Got a divorce, and now I live with her. Most importantly, 
Literally, he never got a chance to violate me. MVP mom. Story time on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom. My best friend is 17, my mom is 34, and my dad is 38. Every day after school, my mom would pick me and my best friend up and take us to our home because my best friend's parents worked until late night. My parents grew to love my best friend and she became part of the family. Well, one night I went to another friend's house to complete a homework project. And when I got back, my parents and my friend looked strange. They were all laughing and just really touchy with each other. Little strange, but I thought nothing of it and I pushed it to the side and a month later I got a job. So now my mom would pick me and my best friend up from school, but this time she would drop me off at Chick-fil-A. And every night I got back, things got weirder and weirder. But once again, I just kept brushing it off. But little did I know that I was about to walk into some mess. Let's just say cops were called. Like for part two. Part two on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, things kept getting weird with my parents and my best friend, but I just kept brushing it off. Well, one day I was covering a shift at my job, Chick-fil-A, and when I got there, the person was there. Turns out that they were just playing a prank on me, but that's neither here nor there. So I called my mom to come pick me up because it was so early. My mom didn't answer, my best friend didn't answer, and my dad didn't answer, so I got worried. I had $40, so I ended up just taking an Uber home. Once I got there, I searched my whole house and there was no one there but i found all three of their phones in my parents room and my mom's clothes was all over the place so i called the cops i start searching the house and i'm on the phone with the cops i end up going to the back of the house where the spa is yeah our house was pretty big i make a right turn to the spa and find my dad my mom and my best friend doing the nasty in the water child like for part three Part three on how my mom and dad did the nasty with my best friend. Okay, so boom, like I said, I make a right turn to the spa and I found my mom, my dad, and my best friend doing the nasty in the water. I literally screamed so hard and the cops asked me if I was okay. Then I said, sorry, there's no missing person, but there is underage nastiness going on. The police immediately came, arrested them, and they pressed charges. All three of those people I call my mom, dad, and best friend tried to apologize to me but I definitely did not accept that and I ended up moving into my granny's home now I'm 27 and I'm happily married and I didn't invite none of them I also have a one-year-old baby boy and my mom is trying to see him but nope my grandparents are my only parents that I know just because your blood doesn't make you family good riddance Story time on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, y'all, so today's story is my own. And thank you guys for 1 million followers. All right, y'all, let's get into it. Okay, so boom. About two years ago in 2019, I lived by myself in my own apartment. At this time, I was at the end of my lease and I was actually moving to another apartment. I had to do everything by myself because I had nobody to help me, so I had to go get a U-Haul truck. This was my first time using Uber because I have my own car. But to get to U-Haul, I had to Uber over there so I could get the truck and then go from apartment to apartment. My first Uber driver bringing me to the U-Haul truck was fine. I had no issues with him and it was pretty normal and fast. So once I was done with the U-Haul truck and I was done moving, I had to return the truck to its location. And then I had to Uber back to my apartment where my car was. Now this second Uber driver, this is where the issue comes in. Y'all, it was literally crazy. My life was at stake. Life for part two. Part two on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, so boom, like I said, I returned my U-Haul truck and I waited for my Uber driver to come pick me up. When my Uber driver came to pick me up, right from the beginning, I knew something was off about him. Always trust your instincts. He was a little weird and off, but I told myself that it's only a 10 minute drive and it will be over soon. So I sat on the back of the car and I just stayed on my phone, you know, minding my business. And then the guy just started talking to me like, I guess he was trying to have small talk. But the weird thing is I couldn't understand what he was saying. And I got footage, you guys listen to this yeah i didn't know what he was saying but i just thought he wanted to do small talk so i just was like oh yeah mm -hmm, yeah oh ooh, ah but then all of a sudden he went off the path of my route i was like um excuse me you took the wrong turn then he turned back and looked at me and said i think we're going exactly where we need to be it gets worse like for part three Part three on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday okay so boom like i said he went off the path of my route and I said, um, excuse me, you made the wrong turn. Then he turned around and looked at me and said, I think we're going exactly where we need to be. I still didn't get it and I looked confused and I was just like, just drop me off at this gas station here. And child, he locked the door. At that moment, my heart sank and I knew exactly what was going on. 
I was being kidnapped on my birthday. He locked all the doors and put child locks so I wouldn't be able to unlock and leave either. I was under pressure, but I knew I had to think fast and get out of this situation. Y'all, he was driving fast, but thank God he wasn't on a highway, so there was red lights. And I live in Miami, so traffic hour is real. I knew that once he stopped at a red light, that that would be my only chance to get the hell out this car. So here we go. We stopped at the red light, and I took his head and bashed it into his steering wheel. He didn't see it coming, so I did it pretty easy. Running out of time, like for part four. Part four on how my Uber driver tried to kidnap me on my birthday. Okay, so boom, like I said, he stopped at a red light and I took his head and started bashing it into the wheel. He didn't see it coming, so that's why I was able to overpower him at that moment. As I was bashing his head, I knew that his door was the only way I was able to get out because of the child lock. As I bashed his head, I unlocked the door and I literally slinged my whole body to the front of the car and I was literally on top of him. Unlocked the door, opened it, and I just jumped out. He held onto one of my legs, so I ended up falling on the floor on the street. But at this point, everyone was looking and someone was coming to my rescue so he just closed his door and locked it and as soon as the light turned green he bolted i was bruised all over like my arm but mostly my knees i went inside the gas station and i waited for my friend to come pick me up y'all all this on my birthday ruined my whole day but i say that to say this be careful thank you guys for one mail Story time on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant it's giving stepdaddy it's giving betrayal Anyways, so boom, I was 17 at the time, my boyfriend was 20, and my mom was 35. So me and my boyfriend were together for two years, but it was very rocky because he couldn't keep his third leg in his pants. I would go to my mom for advice, but she was always on his side. You know that one family member or friend you go to for advice, and instead of hearing you out, they say, what did you do? Yeah, that was my mom. I would be like, hey mom, George cheated on me. Let's call him George. And she would say, well honey, what did you do to cause George to cheat on you like what anyways one day i decided i no longer wanted to be treated like crap so i left george and i left george for good but guess what he was always still around because my mom would always invite him to dinners and movies and that was just the beginning like for part two part two on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant yes it was giving stepdaddy so like i said i broke up with my boyfriend because he was a serial cheater but my mom was still inviting him over I would tell my mom to stop, but she kept saying that he was family. I was so pissed at my mom that I literally always stayed in my room, and when he would come over, I would hear them downstairs watching movies and laughing. I thought it was weird, but I definitely didn't think they would have gotten married, let alone have my little sister. Well, two weeks after our breakup, yes, just two weeks, one night when my ex-boyfriend George was over, I all of a sudden didn't hear them downstairs watching a movie, but I did hear my mom's room door slam shut. Then I heard thumping, and that wasn't about to happen on my watch. I ran to open the door, but the door was locked, so I started knocking. My mom opened the door, and I seen her hair in shambles and my ex on her bed. Like for part three. Part three on how my boyfriend married my mom and got her pregnant. Yes, yes, stepdaddy, we get it. So like I said, I heard thumping in my mom's room, so I ran and opened the door, but it was locked. So I knocked, she opened the door, and her hair was in shambles with my ex on her bed. And might I add, he was naked. I cried and said, how could you do this to me? Do you know what this lady said? She said, well, sweetie, I understand him. You guys weren't compatible. And we're getting married Sunday, so this is something you're going to have to get used to. I attacked my mom, fought her, beat her, actually. And I moved in with my dad, who was disgusted by her. I bet you guys are hoping she didn't actually marry him. Well, she did, and she ended up pregnant. I had the last laugh, because fast forward a year later, and my mom is crying in tears. And y'all wouldn't believe why. The story gets crazier. Life for part four. Part four on how my ex married my mom and got her pregnant. He graduated to stepdaddy, but not for long. So like I said, fast forward a year later, I had the last laugh because here is my mom crying her eyes out. Why, you may ask? Oh yeah, he was cheating a lot. And with younger girls. He even tried to get back with me. I laughed at my mom and said, oh, I thought you understood him, hmm? You must be doing something to make him cheat. Karma's a bee. And my mom was pregnant with a girl, but unfortunately she had a miscarriage. Rest in peace to my sister. That's the only part I'm actually sad about. She ended up divorcing my ex and now she's left with nothing. No husband, two failed marriages, no relationship with your daughter. And don't feel bad for her guys. She went for her sister's man next. But that's a whole nother story. I'm not dangerous, but I can make you bleed. Oh, <laughs> 
how I caught the deacon sleeping with the altar boy in the same room as me. Okay, so boom, I have a religious family that goes to church every Sunday. My parents would always volunteer me to help around in church, so half of my life I lived at church. The deacon of the church was 48, and the altar boy, who was also my friend, was 12. Now this story gets straight to the point. There's not really any backstory. There was nothing suspicious at all. The deacon and the altar boy barely spoke to each other. Like literally no one in church or anyone around the church who helped suspected anything. Well, one day my pastor asked me to fold a hundred linens. It was for a church party that was happening. He set me up in one of the rooms that were barely used and told me he was gonna send somebody to help. 20 minutes in, I got cold since I was sitting under the vent, so I moved to the corner of the room. The corner I moved to, you barely can see me because I was covered by benches. Ten minutes after I moved, the deacon and the altar boy walks into the room, locks the door and starts making out and it doesn't stop there. Like for part two. Part two on how I caught the deacon sleeping with the altar boy in the same room as me. So like I said, I was in a corner peacefully folding my linen until the deacon and the altar boy walks in. They didn't see me and they start making out. All of a sudden, pants are being taken off, booties are being grabbed, and people are being bent over. And if you're asking if they, you know, yeah, yeah, they did. And I watched the whole thing in shock. By this point, I already dropped to the floor and I was just hiding. 10 minutes, yes, 10 minutes when they were finally done, they walked out. I told my parents as soon as I got home and y'all wouldn't believe the response. They literally said that that church was filled with powerful people and they didn't want to involve themselves in it. So they told me not to tell a soul. My parents took me left and we never looked back, never went back to that church again. So this is kind of like a deep, dark family secret, but hey, now you guys know. <laughs> Story time on how I was almost kidnapped. Okay, you guys, so today's story is my own. Let's get into it. Okay, so boom. I was in the ninth grade when this happened and my brother was in the 12th. We always took a bus to the bus stop that was five minutes away from our house and we walked the rest of the way home. I had super strict parents, so I didn't have a cell phone. This detail comes into play later on. So on this particular day, our routine changed. My brother had to complete some community service hours, so we were going to separate. I was gonna go home and my brother was gonna go the opposite direction to the daycare that was also five minutes away from the bus stop the bus dropped us off and before my brother walked away he told me to be careful and i was like yeah yeah thinking this was going to be a regular walk home but i was definitely wrong about that about three minutes into me walking when my brother was no longer in sight a car slowly pulls up next to me and puts his window down like for part two Part two on how I was almost kidnapped. Okay, so I'm walking home alone and my brother is no longer in sight and the streets are kind of empty. A car slowly pulls up next to me and a guy puts his window down. A man who looks like he's in his 40s yells out, hello, beautiful. I kept walking and ignoring him and he got louder and now he's following me in the same pace as I'm walking with his car. Hey, what's your name? That's what he yelled, but he said it so loud that it scared me and I started walking even faster. He drives up next to me again and leans over to the passenger seat to try to open the door and told me to get in at this point i'm jogging so he parked his car and started jogging right after me i full-blown started running and guess what he did he went back into his car and started driving to me at this point i'm 30 seconds away from my house and i don't want to go there so he knows where i live so i go to the gas station and he follows me like for part three Part three on how I was almost kidnapped. So like I said, I started running and he got back into his car and I was 30 seconds away from my house so I didn't want him to know where I lived so I ran to the gas station and he followed me. So now I'm in the gas station acting like I'm buying something and this guy literally parked his car and walks inside and comes right up to me. He then says, hello beautiful, what's your name? I don't know why I answered, I just was scared so I said my name was Victoria, which is not, it's Valerie, but I said Victoria. Then he grabs my arm and says, Victoria, you're coming home with me tonight he starts to squeeze my arm and grips it really tight y'all i was so scared i don't even know why i didn't scream i was just like in fear but i'll be damned if this man was gonna take me home he whispered in my ear to walk to the car and at that moment i screamed to the cashier like for part four
Hi guys, thank you for watching, I love you guys so much, please like and subscribe to see more great videos, see you again.